Hi everyone, this is part one of a new project I've just started and in this project we're going to do a wooden toy train and this tutorial is kind of a sequel to the last one where we created the frame structure and like in the previous tutorials I used DXF files as a basis and I downloaded those files from vk.com and converted them into Adobe Illustrator files. If you want to follow along, you can download an Adobe Illustrator file for the first part of the project. As usual, you will find the link to that project file in the video description. Let's have a quick look at what we're going to do. Now, here are some images of the real world model on which this project is based. And the first wagon we're going to do is the coal wagon here. This image as well as a few others are included in the download so you can have a look at them if you want to. There's not too many, just a handful of the locomotive, this wagon here, the caboose, the back of the locomotive and here is an image of the log wagon. But the first one, like I said, that we are going to do is the coal wagon here and we'll end up with a model like you see in this image here. And it consists of a number of parts that we're going to put together based on the Adobe Illustrator file that you can download. Like in the previous tutorial, we're going to start by cleaning up the Illustrator splines and then we're going to put this wagon together and extrude all the splines. And we're also going to apply some decal textures. And in order to create these textures, we're going to do some spline modeling as well. So let's get started with the first part of this project and model this coal wagon. We will start this project with the coal wagon and the decision to do that first is a pretty random one. I just had a look at this one first and figured out how to do it. So we're going to start with this one. And in this reference image, you can see the real world model. You can see we have the locomotive and we have four wagons. Some of these will be fairly easy to do, like these two. The caboose will be a little more complicated. And as far as the degree of difficulty is concerned, the coal wagon is somewhere in between these two and the caboose. The wheel construction on these wagons is the same, so we can save a little work there, but there's still a lot of stuff that we need to do. Let's jump into Cinema 4D and start working on the coal wagon. First of all, we need to import the Illustrator file. So let's go to File, Merge, and just double click on the coal wagon and caboose Illustrator file. And I picked a scale of 0.01 centimeters for the scale, which will give us a fairly realistic scale for that train. And I have checked connect splines here. Let's just hit OK. And there we go. That is our coal wagon as well as the caboose. And I'm going to save this file out as coal wagon and caboose. C4D. And that will be our basis for modeling the coal wagon and the caboose. Now let's have a look at this. The good news is the spline seem to be fairly accurate. So putting the model together will actually not be that hard. However, as you can see, we do have quite a lot of parts and one of the challenges is to figure out how to put the individual wagons together. The parts for the coal wagon are these ones and these ones here. And I'm going to copy all of these splines to a new Cinema 4D file. Let's make sure that we grab everything here. And it looks like I just selected the null object as well. I'm just going to hit Control X to cut out these splines just to see if I grabbed everything and I missed a couple here. So control Z to undo and I'm also going to select these splines here. Let's do another control X and that's fine. I'll just undo that control N to create a new file and let's hit control V to paste these splines and I'm going to save this as the coal wagon. I've already prepared a file with that name. It's still empty so I can overwrite it. And 
And you can see we're getting a ton of splines here. We need to organize the scene first and clean up the splines. There's some parts on this that will be actual geometry and some of it I'm going to do as just textures like the decals on the side, on the side walls and on the back wall of the coal wagon. First of all, I'm going to select the front wall. If you drag your rectangle selection tool over these parts here, you should select all the splines and you can see the selected splines over here in the object manager. I'm just going to hit Alt G to put them in a null object. And let's call this wall front and I'm going to hide it. And let's drag it down to the bottom here. And next I'm going to select the left side wall. I'm also going to put this in a null object and I selected the back wall as well. Let's just undo that. Just hit Control X to see if I only selected the left wall and this time I did. I'll just hit Control V to paste this and this is going to be our wall left. It's just a single object. I'll drag this down here and hide it. So let's continue with naming this one. And this is the wall back. I'm going to hide that as well. And that leaves this part here, which is the right wall. Let's hide that as well. And this is the floor. I'm also going to group these splines and call this floor and I'm going to hide this one as well. And I'll start working on the front wall first. And by the way, the nice thing about these splines is that if I switch everything back on, we can leave everything where it is. It's already in position. We just need to rotate the individual walls to create the body of this coal wagon here. So I'm not going to move these parts around. Now the front wall consists of the shape on the outside and these additional splines here. And what I'm going to do with these splines is I'll turn them into a single spline and we can either extrude these splines and render them and put the image as a decal texture on this front wall or we can create actual geometry. For the front wall, I'm going to turn this into actual geometry. I'm going to deselect everything and then I'll just select these splines And I'll put them in a new null object. So Alt G. And this is the wall front. Let's call it decal. And I'll switch that off for now. And this is the wall. Oh no, this is an additional spline. We don't really need this one. We can actually delete it. So let's get rid of that. And this is the wall front. Let's go to point mode. The first thing I'm going to do is, well, let's drag this out of the null object. The first thing I'm going to do is select all of the points and you can see these are all set to soft interpolation, but we don't need that. So I'm going to right click and set all of these points to hard interpolation. And then we're going to clean up that spline by selecting each of the points and checking whether it's actually only just one point or whether we have overlapping points. And you can see I've switched on the heads up display and my rectangle selection tool is set so I can select the elements that are not visible as well. So only select visible elements is checked off here. And we have two points here. We can weld them, hopefully. And this will turn them into one point. And I'll just go around and select each of these and weld them. And I'm hitting the space bar to switch between the rectangle selection tool and the weld tool, which makes it possible to work fairly quickly. So let's select this point, this one we need to weld. We need to weld these ones. Just 
So let's do a final check. We should have six points here, four here, and another six points here. Let's put this back into the wall front null object. And next I'm going to deal with these blinds here. I'll just switch these back on. And what I'll do here is I'll select these blinds and I'll drag them up so they're all below each other. And I'm going to drag out a copy. And I'm going to move these blinds a little bit. And I'll do plus 0.2 and then I'll select these blinds and I'm also going to drag these out. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That was the first blind, so I'll drag them to here and then I'll drag out a copy and I'll move these over on the x-axis plus 0.2. And then we can select all six of them and use connect objects and delete. And I'll select these blinds and also use connect objects and delete. And then I'm going to select the splines over here and I'll just delete them. And now we're going to turn these two splines into a single spline. And I think we can do that right away. So I'll just connect these two. And I'll switch that to solo mode. Let's go to point mode. And we need to combine these. And what I'll do here is I'll select these two points. And I'll just undock that menu. And I'm going to join this segment. And I'll do the same here and here. And over here. And I'll make a cut. I'll switch on snapping. Actually, I'll make several cuts. And you can see the knife tool didn't really snap to the points, so I'll just have to do that again. And it's still not snapping to the points. So let's try and switch on spline snapping. And I'll just snap to this spline and it looks like it's still not working. So maybe it will work if I get a little closer and I'll also switch off visible only. So that's a little better and we also need a cut here. And it's still not working, but we're not going to worry about that. We'll just make our cuts and... We're going to weld these points. Okay. So I'm going to weld these two points to this one. You can actually delete this one. I will disconnect this one, then select again. And you can see we now have three points. I'll just delete those. And I'm going to weld these two points here. We can also get rid of this one. delete these ones and I'll select these two and disconnect them reselect them and delete them and I'm going to weld these two points here did I do this right let's weld these two first and then 
I'm going to weld these two select these two and join that segment and I'm also going to join the segment down here and that doesn't do anything maybe we can already close that spline no that's not working so let's try and join this segment and this one and this is not working here Let's try and close that spline again. And that is working. So that is something that we can now use and extrude. If I put that in an extrude object, let's put this to minus 0.1 maybe. We have something that we can actually render. And we can use this and render out an image and use it as a texture decal or we can use the actual geometry and like I said before for this one I am actually going to use the actual geometry instead of creating a texture from this so we have this front wall decal null object I'm going to copy this and rotate it 180 degrees and then we can select both of these splines and use connect objects and delete. Get rid of this null object and of this one. And this is our wall front decal. And I'll keep this in this null object because we can rotate both of these objects later. So we can use this one null object to get the front wall into position instead of working with two separate splines. Let's continue with the left wall here. And this is a single spline. And it actually looks pretty horrible. I mean the center part which is going to be the decal. I'm just going to remodel that and this one I'll put onto this coal wagon as a decal texture but I'm still going to create a spline and that's a little bit of work but it's worth it because we can reuse the pattern on the corners because it's repeated on all of the corners on the other walls as well and what I'll do here is I'll make a copy and this copy is the wall left decal I'll switch that off for now and then I'm going to select the wall select one of these points go to select select connected hit UI on the keyboard to invert the selection and I'm going to delete all of these points and then we can go ahead and clean up this side wall here first of all I'm going to select all of these points and set them to hard interpolation and we can set this one to hard interpolation as well and then I'll just go around the object and check where I have overlapping points and I'm going to weld these Let's do another check here. We have two, four, six, eight points, which is correct. We have four down here, and we have three here, and another four here. And on the decal, I'm going to select the connected points here and delete them, which leaves only this pattern here. And I'm going to create a spline from that I'll move this back a little bit on the z-axis let's go to the front view 
and I think I'm going to just center this on the grid so we can copy the pattern top to bottom and left to right a little more easily. So let's go to character commands, reset PSR, and I'll also give this a different color. So I'll switch on use color, and let's make this something bright that we can see. And then we're going to start creating this shape here. And depending on what you want to do, if you only want to do a texture, you could just use different splines and render them without connecting them. I'm going to create a single spline here. And I'll start on this corner here. Let's go ahead and create uh, a circle. I'm going to scale this down. And I'll move it over to here. Scale it down a bit more. We don't need to be very accurate here. The point is to get a nice looking shape. Let's drag this down. I'm going to use ring for this. And holding down the Alt key, I'm going to adjust the size of that ring a little bit. Let's do something like this. Deselect everything. And I'm going to use the Spline Pen tool, set it to Bezier. And I'm going to create the next shape. And we're going to use Spline Mask to combine these splines later. So I'm going to do something like this. I'll make this tangent over here very small because we need to stay inside of that circle shape that we've just created. And then we can go ahead and drag another point out here. And I'll just move this over. Let's move it over to here for now. I'll make this tangent very small. And I'll just left click down here to create another point. Again, left click. And this one I'm actually going to drag out as a point that is set to soft interpolation. And then I'm just going to create another point here. Make this tangent very small. Select all of the points and now we can tweak the tangents to get the shape that we want. And I'll switch to the Move tool, double click on this point, and I'm going to set the X axis to zero. And just move this over a little bit. And I'll do the same for this point. And move it over a little bit. And switch to my spline pen tool again. Switch on lock tangent rotation and I'll just tweak the tangents here a little bit. Again, I'm selecting all the points here. And I'll just change this one to something like this maybe. Move that back. Let's switch that off for a second. And I'll just tweak this spline a little more.
So something like this should be fine. Let's stick with that for now. We can always tweak that later. I'm also going to close that spline so we can subtract it from that ring shape later. And we can make a copy of this and recenter or center the axis on this spline. And I'll just move the object axis to about here. And I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and move it over to here and rotate this again to about here. I think I'll make this 90 degrees because I do need these lines to come out straight here. And let's move this up to about here. And let's just move these points back a little bit. Maybe scale this one up like so and scale this one up a little bit to tweak the shape here a little bit more. Let's just move these down a little bit. Scale this one. Yeah, I think I'll just move that down a little bit further and then scale it. So something like this. And I'll put this circle in a spline mask object and then add the other two splines so we can combine these to form this shape here and I'll create another circle and I'll scale it down let's move this over to here scale this down a bit more and I'm also going to use the ring option for this one and holding down the alt key I'm going to adjust that radius again and then I'll make this editable by hitting C on the keyboard and I'll select the bottom two points here and disconnect them and delete them and then I can extrude these points and we need to extrude them where the spline is white we can't extrude points at the end of the spline where it's blue and I'll just extrude this down and I'll go all the way down to here Let's extrude this point down, move it to about here. And in order to extrude these points over here, we have to select them or each of them and reverse the sequence. And now we can extrude this. And let's go ahead and reverse the sequence here and extrude this. And I'll move both of these points down to about here. Select all of these points, set them to hard interpolation and I'll just scale them to about here and then I'll select these two points and join the segment and then we can close that spline and I'm going to make a copy and I'll center the axis rotate the copy 90 degrees and then 
move it into position over here. And let's just add these to the spline mask object. So that's looking good. And we still need these swirly extensions here. And for these ones, I'm going to start with another spline. And I'll put my first point here inside of the shape that I've just created. And let's drag this tangent down, make it very small. It needs to stay inside of this shape here. And then we can put another point here. Actually, I'm going to put it here and just rotate that around. And we'll probably need another point here. I just select all the points and just adjust the tangent here. Something like this. And I'll put another point here. And I'll just put these roughly into position for now. If I hold down shift, I can rotate this tangent here. And let's go ahead and put another point here. I'll make this tension very small again and I'll just switch off the reference and I'm going to select all of the points on the spline I've created and use the spline pen tool to just tweak that shape and turn it into something that looks a little bit nicer. That is actually not looking too bad. Maybe let's create another point here and just drag this out this out a little bit and I'm going to switch on the reference decal so we're close enough to that shape I'll just tweak this tangent a little bit and it's a little bit confusing I know I don't worry about it like I said earlier, the main idea is to get a nice looking shape. That's all we want. And we can now close this spline, make a copy, center the axis on this spline, and I'll just switch on enable axis and move this point over to here, or move the object axis over to here. And then we can rotate this spline 180 degrees. And 
90 in this direction and let's switch off our decal and let's move this into position about here and we need to make sure that this intersects this spline here And let's go ahead and put these two new splines into our spline mask object as well. And that is our basic shape. That is the one that we can repeat on the corners. So what I'll do with this one is I'll make a backup copy. I'll put this in an object. We can use that as our backup object. I'll just rename that and switch it off and I'll make this blind mask object editable go to point mode select this point and drag it out a bit let's switch on our decal and what I'll do here to get this tip is I'll select these two points on my spline and just chamfer these points to about here And using the spline pen, I'm going to tweak those tangents a little bit. I'll just delete this point. And I'm also going to chamfer these two. And do something like this. And I'll use equal tangent length for these two points. And then again, I'm using the spline pen tool to tweak that shape a little bit. Let's drag this out to get a nice tip. And I'll set these to equal tangent direction. And let's see how that looks. I just put this in an extrude object. It helps to see the shape a little better. And I think we could tweak that tip a little more to make the transition a little bit softer or smoother. Let's try and set this to equal tangent direction. Maybe we can even get rid of this point, select all the points, and I'll just tweak these tangents here to get a nicer tip. And I'll just scale this up a little bit. The shape does seem to look right. I'm just going to select all the points here. Grab my spline pen tool again and I'll just tweak the shape a little more to get a little bit closer to that line in the reference image and I'll do the same here. So maybe something like this. That actually looks pretty nice. I'm going to keep that. And that will be our template for the decal wall left. I'll put this in the backup null object. And I'm going to center the axis. And let's make a copy. I'll drag this down. Actually, I'm just going to move it to minus five on the y-axis and then just rotate this 180 degrees. And 
and I'll make another copy rotate this 180 degrees and I'll just reset the object axis for both of these select this one and I'm going to move it over to minus 11 on the x-axis and I'll make another copy rotate it 180 degrees and I'll just move this to plus 5 and in this case we need to move this down a little bit further to about here Okay, so far so good. Let's switch off our reference. And on this last spline, we need to get rid of these points here. And of these ones, because if you check the reference, we don't have these swirly extensions on this one. So I'll just switch that off. And let's see, I think I'll just delete these two points here, select these ones, grab my spline pen tool, lock the tangent rotation, and I'll just make adjustments to the tangents here. And I think that's looking good do a little more tweaking on this one let's drag this up a little bit I'll just move this down and scale it could do the same thing here move it over a bit and just scale this up a little bit just to get a smoother transition here and I think that's looking fine and we also need some lines in between these corner shapes as you can see and for this I'm going to use a rectangle spline I'm going to scale it down to about here for now and I'll make a backup copy of this last one we did we may have to reuse that and we've changed the shape a little bit by removing these swirly extensions so I'll just drag a copy into the backup folder and we can select these four and use connect objects and delete to turn this into a single spline just rotate this one a little bit like so change the height to maybe 0.4 and we need to change the width because it needs to intersect the other two splines and before I do anything else, I'm going to just make a copy of this and move it down a bit. And I guess we could have rotated this a little bit more. So let's go ahead and do that. Just to line this up a little better with the reference image. Can be a little bit tricky. I'll just drag it out to and rotate it like this. And let's make a copy and move this down. And I'll make this maybe 0.2. Let's switch off our reference so we can see a little better what we're doing. And then I'm just going to adjust the width until I intersect these shapes and let's do the same with this one 
and I'm going to move this over a little bit. And we can make a copy of these two and just drag them down and I'll change the rotation. Put it back to zero. to move this one to here and this one down to here and I'll change the width a little bit to something like this and let's switch on the Reference again, we also need these lines on the left and on the right. So we're going to make another copy of these two. And I'll just rotate these around 90 degrees. And I'll move these over to here. And let's change the width. And just move this down a little bit. Same here. I'll make it a lot shorter and move it to about here. And then we can make another copy and move these two over to here. And this one to about here. And we need to adjust the width again. And I'll just keep a backup copy of two of these. And I'll select all of these rectangle splines and connect them. And then I'm going to put our corner shapes in a spline mask object and add our rectangle spline. And let's make this editable. I'll just make another backup copy. And there we go, that is our finished decal. I'll just center the axis. Let's switch on the left wall again. And I'll just move this over and down. something like this and it's a little big so I'm just going to scale it a little bit like so and I'll move some of these points around That's looking pretty good. And that was a little bit of work, but like I said before, we can reuse that for the decals on the other two walls. And also we can choose to create actual geometry from this or render out textures. And no matter what you do, you will get something that is nice and smooth as compared to the original. I will put this 
spline in into the or I'll put it as a child of the left wall and I will rename it to wall left decal so that's the left wall done next I'm going to deal with the wall at the back and I'll make a copy and rename this to wall back decal and I'll hide it and on this one I'm going to select one of the points on the outside and then select the connected points hit UI to invert the selection and delete all of these points and I'll select all of the other ones and set them to hard interpolation we can get rid of this point or can we yes we should actually be able to get rid of these and then we'll just go around and check where we have overlapping points and weld them And again, I'm checking the number of points. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight here. And you can see in the heads up display, that's exactly how it is. So we should also have eight here and four down here. And for the decal, I'm going to, again, select the connected points on the outside. This time I'm just going to delete those. And we're going to use that as a reference to create a proper decal based on the template that we created before. I will just center the axis on this one and use reset PSR, position scale and rotation to center it on the grid. And then we can go to our backup folder and drag out a copy of our template. Hmm. Not this one, I'll just undo that. So let's drag out a copy of this. And I'll just move it into position. About here. And then we can make a copy move that over to the other side rotate it 180 degrees and then I'll just make a copy of both of these rotate them 180 degrees and I'll just connect them and move them to minus nine on the y-axis and we can select all four of these and connect them. Let's just center the axis. And I'll make a copy of the two rectangle splines. I will move these into position here And I'll just change the width on both of these to about here. And I'll connect them, put the axis to zero so we can make a copy and rotate it around 180 degrees. And then I'll just make a copy of both of these and rotate those 90 degrees. Oh, 
I just selected one of them. Let me just undo that. So select both of these, drag out a copy and rotate these. And I'll move this one up to about here. Copy the Y position. I'll just move this one down by the same amount to put that into place. Select both of them. And I'll just select these points here. And I'll scale these to about here. And I think we can switch off the decal because it's kind of confusing. And I think I'll just move these over a little bit further to about here. Just lining these up a little better with what we have in the reference image. So something like this. And I'll just copy the Y position and then select these points and move them to the same position. And on the other one, I think I'll just move these over a little bit further to about here. Let's just undo that. I'll just move these points over. And copy the X position. Select the other one. Select these points. And move these to the same position on the X axis. And I think we need to reset the axis first before we can do that. So I'll just do minus the amount by which I moved the other points, which didn't help much. I'll just move these over manually to about here. If I reset the axis on this one, we should be able to do this more accurately, hopefully. So now we have the proper position that we can copy and paste to this one. Just make sure that it's positive. So we get something that is really symmetrical. And then we can put this in a spline mask object and add our rectangle splines. And I'll just make a backup copy. make this editable and that's looking good let's switch on our back wall again and I'll just move this over and down and I'll switch on snapping grab my move tool and I'm using axis extension and I'll try to snap it to the middle of this spline. And I'll do the same for the y-axis. Hmm, I can't really do that. Well, if we snap it to this point, that seems to work and put it right at the center. We also need to scale this down a little bit. And let's just move these points up switch off snapping first. So I'll move them to about here. Copy the Y position and then
paste it to here. And that is our back wall. And I'll make this a child of the back wall. And let's switch that off. And next we're going to deal with the right wall, which is exactly the same as the left wall. So here I'm just going to select the connected points on the outside, invert the selection and delete all of these. And I'll set these points to hard interpolation. And then I'll just go around and weld the overlapping points. So we have three, four, five, six point seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's right. We have four points here and one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight points here. And I'm not going to copy that left wall decal. We can copy that over once we've rotated the wall pieces around and created the body of this wagon. So let's clean up the scene a little bit. We can get rid of this original decal because it's crap. Let's delete this extrude object and in the backup object, I'm also going to delete the wall left decal. That's the original one and we don't need that anymore. So the last thing we need to do is clean up the floor. I'll just hide the right wall. And we do need to put a little more work into this because these shapes here, we definitely need to improve a little bit. And we'll also have to figure out a way to do these floorboards and I think I'm going to use these splines and do something similar that I did for the front wall of, of this coal wagon. If you take a look at the images here on the original train we do have these extrusions here so I think I'm also going to create those for the floorboards on the coal wagon. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the splines here. And I need to go to model mode first. And we also need to select these small ones in between. So we have a couple of those. I'm going to hit Alt G to group those. And I'm going to hide that group for now so we can deal with the floor shape first. And what we can do here is we can get rid of this line here, but it's going to select both of them. So let's see which one it is. It is this one. Let's delete this. And that's so we can actually extrude this, uh, extrude this shape properly. Same down here we can delete this spline. And I'll just drag these out of that null object and get rid of this null object. So we're dealing with these three splines here and it looks like I forgot to, I just deleted the important null object, which is this one. Let's get rid of this one. And we have this spline that needs to go into this null object here. So now we have this basic shape and we have an additional spline here and we need to combine these. I think I'll do this right away. 
I'll just connect these two objects and this is our floor and then we need to turn this into something we can use these openings here will be the openings where we need to put the walls so that's these bigger rectangles the smaller rectangles are for the wheel construction. If I go back to the original splines, this is the support for the axle. And we have these extrusions here. And both of these need to go here and here on the floor. So that's what these rectangles are for, or these squares. And we need to turn this into a proper spline. Right now we can't use this because we need a gap in between here. So we need to clean this up a little bit and I'll just make some cuts like before. I'll try and switch on snapping, hoping that the knife tool will actually do its job this time. So I'll just go around and create some cuts here. We also need one here and let's just Add two more here. Okay. We can get rid of this point here. And I'll just select all of these points I created here and I forgot to make a cut here and I'll disconnect these points and then select them again and delete them I'll also select all of these ones and set them to hard interpolation. And then I'll just go around and weld the overlapping points. I'm not going to bother with these extrusions now. We're going to create those from scratch. So I'm not going to try and fix them. And I should have been more careful where I weld these points because we need to make sure these openings fit to the extrusions of the walls. So let's just check the widths here. That is 2.16 and that is exactly what we need but we're off on the y-axis which is bad. So let's see, 216, what is this? That's 216. So we need to make these 216. I'll just move the axis up. Actually, before I do, I'll just scale these down and then select them and change the height to 216. And here, I need to change this to 216. And 
we're off a bit on the y-axis here. 432, 432, okay. So I'm just going to scale these two points to zero and then change that to oh, 432, that's okay. And for this one, I'll just move the position of this point four thirty two, so we're still good. Two sixteen, two sixteen. Here, I'm going to copy the X position of this point and paste it to this one. And I'll do the same over here. Okay, we still need to change the height on the Y axis. I just scale these points down select them again and move the axis down and change the height to 2.16 and we're off a little bit here as well so let's see I'll just copy the X position of this point to this one and we're good here So now we have 216, 216. I'll just scale these points down, select all of them, and change the height to 2.16. And the rest should be fine because this is where I noticed my mistake. 432, and this is 432. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we've got part of the issues fixed. Next, we're going to take care of these areas here. I'll just check these points, set them to hard interpolation. So that's 3.6 by 2.16. That's consistent with the other holes. And let's just check this one. This needs to be round. So let's create a circle and I'll put it over here and scale it down. And let's check the radius, 1.8. Let's try 1.8. And that seems to be a pretty good match. And we need to put it about here. In order to position this accurately, what I'm going to do is I'll switch on snapping and I'm going to use axis extension and snap to, can I snap to the midpoint? No, I can't. Let's just undo that. I know what I'll do. I'll just move that floor to the center. And I'm going to put that circle at the center as well. So we don't need to worry about how we can line this up. And I'll just move this forward again to about here and make it overlap with the original. So that means we can get rid of these points here. And 
we can connect these two objects. And I'll make another copy, which is going to be my reference. And on the original one, I'm going to delete these points and I'm going to select these two and set them to hard interpolation. And let me just reset the axis here. And I'll just move these up to, well, it's anyone's guess really. I'll just scale these down and then chamfer them actually. Yeah, let's chamfer them and that should be fine. Let's just check the scale. These are 9.03 on the y-axis. Let's do 9. I'll move the axis down and change that to 9. Undo that. Deselect these points and then change it to 9. Let's also check the widths here. I'll just copy that because I can reuse it down here. So I'll just get rid of these points and set these ones to hard interpolation. And let's move these ones up and scale them down to the width that we want them to be. Really? I'll just do that again. 7322. Yeah, actually, that is the width. Let's chamfer these points. I'll just select these ones and scale them to 9. So I've just switched from the world coordinate system back to the object coordinate system. So I got my axis where I need it to be. And then let's just change that to 9. And that also changes the width of these points. I think I'll just make another copy of this. Rotate it around 180 degrees. Switch off this one. snap these points and hopefully we're getting something that is consistent with the other side. So that's 9 on the y-axis and the width is still not what it should be. Seven three two two. 7322. Oh, I know what the problem is. The problem is that we need to make sure that the tangents here, and I'll just set these to equal tangent length for now. We need to make sure that these snap to the black line in our reference image. So I'll select this point. Let's see, can I, I'll use the spine pen tool because I can lock the tangent length and then I can rotate this and snap it to the spline. And I'll do the same over here. And that's still not the width that we need. 
which is interesting. And I think the reason might be that these points are at a different position. Yes. So I'll just move these and snap them to the vertices of the reference. What, what did I just do? I can move this over, right? Okay. And now they have the same width and all we need to do is adjust the tangents a little bit. Oh, sorry. Let's switch off lock tangent rotation, not tangent rotation, let's switch off lock tangent length and switch on lock tangent rotation. And we can just fine tune these tangents here, like so. And now we can get rid of these reference splines. And we should be able to close this one. And now we can deal with the floorboards. And I think I'll do them in the same way that I did the decal on the front wall. And they're still over here. Let's just move them to the center. I'll just try and center the axis again. Yeah, that didn't help because we're slightly off, as you can see. So I guess what I'll try and do is, first of all, I'll try to line them up with the center on this edge here by using axis extension. And that's still not working. Yeah, that's not good. But we can snap them to this point here, which is at the center. And we can put them back to zero on the Y axis. we'll just need to reposition some of these points here. So let's go to point mode. I'll select all of these splines, select these points, and I'm going to snap them to here. And I'll just move some of the other points because they need to finish where these gaps are. move these down and then I'll just move some of these back up and we need to change the position of these points here because they're too close to that hole and I think I'll just move them I'll just move them up a little bit Maybe let's move this one forward a little bit. So that's good. And there's some more adjustments we need to make because we also have these holes here. And we need to make sure that we don't get these splines inside of these holes. So I'll use my knife tool and I'll just make cuts like this for now because it's faster. See, was that accurate? Not quite. So I'll just go around and snap these points to the edges. We can also get rid of these points again and of these ones. 
and then we need some more cuts and we can select these points and disconnect them and delete them so that's looking good and then what I'll do is I'll go to model mode and deselect everything and maybe we can switch off that floor for now and I'll select the vertical floorboards or the vertical splines let's just hit Control x yes that's all of them and i'll connect these and let's switch off that floor again and i'll move these over a little bit and i'll move these over plus point one on the x-axis and then i'll make a copy and move these back minus point two and I'll connect these two splines and then we need to do the same thing for these horizontal splines and we can connect these right away and then I'll move these down minus point one make a copy and move these up plus point 0.2 and let's switch off that floor again and now I'm going to what is this one oh okay that's okay I just got confused we have uh, three splines which is exactly how it should be. I'm going to connect these and now we need to turn these into something that we can extrude. So let's go to point mode and what I'll do is I'll use the knife tool again and I'll make cuts where these horizontal lines are and it's really a pain in the butt because the knife tool doesn't snap to the points like it should but never mind. Let's just make the cuts and we can make the adjustments later going to be a, a bit of work but that's just how it is it's going to look pretty in the end and that's the most important thing isn't it next I'm going to snap the points to these lines here let's get rid of this one delete this one and let's move these over and they're not snapping for some reason not sure why I'll just select all of these they do seem to be at hard interpolation so that is not the problem I think I'll just make another cut here and here and let's see if that does anything I'll just weld these points select these and now I could I could snap them interesting so I think there's one more gap we need to take care of and it's this one over here
just make two cuts again. Not sure why I can snap because I do have spline snap switched on. So over here it's working. Let's delete this point and this one. Next I'm going to make some more cuts in between these lines here. to select these and disconnect them and delete them and I guess we can start welding points as well and we need to weld them to these lines here ones and here again I'm going to disconnect these points and delete them delete this one and then let's just deselect everything I'll just make sure to snap this one to the spline if I can and I'm not sure why that is not working hmm I just try and make another cut well let's try and make a cut from here Okay, that's really weird. I'm just going to select all of these points and then weld them to this one. Let's delete these and weld these ones. Delete these points here. I'll disconnect these, delete them, and then just weld these ones here. And we have the same problem here that we had just a minute ago. I'll just make a cut from this point down to here then try to snap this point which is not working so I'll try and make another cut here which is not working either so what I'll do is I'll copy the position and move this point to that same position and then we can select these points and weld them to this one. And I'll continue creating these gaps here by disconnecting some points, deleting them, and then trying to weld the rest
Only one more left. So this time, I won't even try to make another cut. I'll just copy the Y position of this point and move this point to that same position. And then, well, maybe I should, which one did I use? Snapping doesn't work and positioning the point doesn't seem to work either. I'll just do it like this. Won't make much of a difference. Let's just weld these points first. And these ones. And they seem to be lined up as you can see in the coordinates manager down here. So we don't need to worry about being inaccurate or anything or getting mistakes here. So that's a good start. Now we need to join some segments. I'll just undock this window and try and do that. And we could have made our lives a little bit easier by not making those cuts, but rather than creating those cuts, the better option would probably have been to delete these small splines and then use spline mask and a rectangle spline to create these horizontal gaps. I think that would have probably saved us some trouble. Unfortunately, that just occurred to me. So let's see if we can close that spline. Not yet. Well, we still have a couple of issues, which means we need to join more of these. So let's try and close that spline again. And this time it seems to have worked. We should now be able to extrude this spline. And get our floorboards. I'll just remove that extrude object again. And these are the floorboards. And I'll make these a child of the floor delete this null object and let's go ahead and switch all of the objects back on again and we can get rid of this one and now we can start rotating those walls and putting the body together let's start with the front wall I'm going to select the null object and we need to put the object axis to this point here. So switch on enable axis, grab the move tool and we can't really snap it because it's a null object. So I'll just move the object axis and drag it over and snap it to this point and switch the axis off and let's rotate this minus 90 degrees. I'll just 
to switch off that floor for a second. And then we have the wall at the back and on the right. I'm going to put both of these in a null object and I'll move the object of the null object to this point here and then rotate. Well, actually, I'm going to move the axis to here. It doesn't really matter. We just need to extrude these differently. I mean, we could theoretically move the axis of this one over to here and rotate it 90 degrees, which means we'll extrude to the outside and if we move the axis over to here, not sure if that makes any sense, we can move this and snap it to here. I'm not sure if that's really necessary, but in any case, we can extrude everything towards the outside if we do it like that. So let's select the wall back and the wall right. I have to put them in a null object again. And I'll move the axis to this point here. Then rotate this 90 degrees and just move it back and snap it to here. So we can extrude this to the outside too. And then I just remove these two, select the right wall, place the object axis here, rotate this 90 degrees and then just move it and snap it over to here. And I'll just copy that decal from the left wall, put it in here. Rename it to decal right and I'm going to move it over and snap it to this side here. Get rid of that null object. And the floor, I'm going to rotate 90 degrees like this and 90 degrees like this. Let's just have another look at the reference images. I just want to find out where these where these round holes go if they go to the back or to the front of the wagon. So it seems that they're at the back of the wagon, judging by the reference images. So we actually need to rotate this around like this. And then I'm going to put the object axis to this point here. and snap the entire thing to this point here. So we're going to extrude the floor down, basically. And it looks like not everything's matching up the way it should. So we need to change that. I'll change a few things to make things line up. It seems we're only having issues over here. I think we can just select these points and snap them over. And that's it. We have 2.16, which is exactly the length that we need. And that's consistent with everything else. So that is our body for the coal wagon and next we're going to do the wheel construction.
Next, we're going to tackle the wheel assembly. First of all, though, I'll select all of the objects that I've created so far, and I'll hit Alt G to put them in the null object, and I'll move the object axis to the bottom and the center using include children and use all objects. And then we can reset position scale and rotation to put this at the center of the grid. Let's go back to our base file with all the splines in there. And I've already selected the parts that we need for the wheel assembly. So basically we have the wheel and this is the axle support and this is a support for the axle support and this is one part of the axle. We need two of these to create the actual axle. And the wheel support goes into these two openings of the coal wagon here. So I'm going to copy these splines and I'm going to paste them to my coal wagon scene and I'll hide that coal wagon for now and I'll use axis center to move the object axis to the center and I'm going to reset the position scale and rotation of these four splines and first of all I'm going to name each one so this is the wheel This is the axle support. This is the axle support connection. And this last one is the axle part. And if I switch that null object back on and switch off viewport solo single mode, you can see that we need to rotate the axle around. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just hide everything else for now. So we need to rotate this 90 degrees. And I'm going to reset the axis to zero and we need a copy of this and we need to rotate this copy around 180 degrees and we also need to rotate it 90 degrees like this and again I'm going to reset the axis on this and then we also need to move these around a bit So I'll switch on snapping and I'm going to snap this, let's see, first of all I need to move the object axis again over to here. And then snap it to this point here. And we also need to move the other one and I'll just move it down because it makes it a little easier to see things. I'm also going to move the object axis on this one to here and then I can snap it to here. And that means we need to extrude this one over and this one down. And I'll try to center these by putting them in the null object. And I'll center the axis on these two objects. And I'll just use reset position scale and rotation to put them at the center. And then I'll just drag these out again. Next, let's deal with the wheel. And I'll just hide the axles for now. And the wheel, 
we can do this in different ways. If you take a look at one of the reference images, we have these grooves in here and we can either try and do the wheel as a single spline or we can split it into three different parts. And I'm going to use a single spline, but I'm also going to show you how to create three different parts. Before we do though, I'll switch off that wheel again because we should be consistent and try and clean up our splines first. So I'm just going to center this one, select all of the points, I'll set these to hard interpolation and I'll do the same thing for the other axle part. Now let's select this one and I'll also quickly check for overlapping points and weld them. And it's important that we do that. If the splines are not clean, it can lead to problems. For example, when we add fillet caps, Okay, so this one's fine. And now this one's fine as well. I'm going to switch these off again and take care of that wheel now. And before I do anything else, let's check right away for overlapping points. We don't seem to have any here. We have two here. I'm going to weld them and then use equal tangent length. Same down here. And I'm going to select all of these points here at the center, set them to hard interpolation, and then also check for overlapping points. And we do have one here. And there's another one here. Okay, so now that is fixed. If you want to do this wheel in three separate parts, what we need to do is select these two points, for example, and then I'm going to select the connected points and I'm going to split these off and this will be the wheel outside. Let's go ahead and hide that. Select the original wheel spline again. And I'm going to select these two points, select the connected points, split them off. And this will be the wheel middle part. And then we can select points on these two segments on the inside. And again, select the connected points, split them off. And this is the wheel center. And now we have three different splines that we can extrude and that we can add fillet caps to. I'm not going to use these though but I'll put them in my backup null object. And I'm going to do this as a single spline. And the way I'm going to do this is I'll select these two points here, select the connected points, split these off, and then I'm going to select both of these splines and connect them again. And if I extrude that,
You can't see the difference right now, but we do have overlapping points right now. But as soon as I add fillet caps, you can see why I've been doing this. If I switch that to constrain, bring that down to a much smaller radius. You can see that we're getting the same result that we could get with three different splines, but we're just using a single spline here. And this is the version I'm going to continue working with. We're going to add fillet caps to all of the splines or extrude objects later. And in order to get a little more distance between this circle here and the inside of the wheel, I'll just select the connected points and scale these. First of all, I'm going to reset the axis and I'll do maybe 5.5 or 6. Let's try 5.5. And I think that should be fine. Now I've deleted the extrude object, which wasn't very smart. I'll just test this again. So we have a little bit of distance between these two shapes at the center, which will make it more flexible regarding the fillet caps we can use. I'll just rename that to wheel. And let's go back to model mode and I'll make one of these axle parts visible and then I'll take the wheel and I will snap it to this point here and I'll do that in the top view. So I'll move it over and I'll just snap it to this point and then move it back to zero. Let's switch on the other axle part. And that's looking good. And we can take that wheel and make a copy and just move the copy over. And I'll just do a quick test and extrude these just to make sure everything's in order. I'll just add an extrude object here and I'll drag all of these splines in there. Switch the extrude to hierarchical. And I'll just make this editable and that will create four extrude objects that will also have the names of the splines that we extruded. And let's see, we need to extrude all of these 2.16. We need to extrude this minus 0.216 and this one we also need to extrude minus 0.216, no. We don't. Let's wait a second and extrude this minus 2.16. Maybe we need to go on another axis. Yes, we do. So I'll switch these to zero and do minus 2.16 here. And for this one, We also need to change the axis. Okay, so that's fitting okay, and that's fitting okay over here.
And for now, I'm just going to remove them from the extrude objects and delete those extrude objects again. So that is the wheel and the axles. I'll just switch these off for now. And then we'll take care of these two pieces here. And we need to rotate the axle support minus 90 degrees and reset the axis. And let's not forget to check those splines first. On this one, I'm going to select all of these points here, including these ones, and I'll set them to hard interpolation. And we need to change this shape here and obviously the tip of the axle support as well. This one needs to be completely round, so we need a circle in here. And we also need to round off this one here. First of all though, I'll just quickly check the points for overlapping points and weld everything that needs to be welded. have four points here so that's fine and then I'm going to add a circle spline and scale that down and I'll move it down to about here and scale it down a bit more trying to get close to the original and let's settle for a radius of 2.7. Let's try 2.5. That's a bit too small. I think 2.7 was fine. And I'll just select these points here and get rid of that. And then we can select both of these objects and connect them. And rename this to Axle Support. And I'll just delete these two points here. Select these two. So before I do, I'll make a copy, which will be my reference. So I'll delete these points and I'll move these over and I'll snap them to this spline here. And I'm also going to scale these down to 5.5 .5 seems to be the number that we need here. And then we can chamfer these points. And then we can just get rid of this copy here. So that's the axle support. Let's deal with this object now. And here we can delete a couple of points. And also we can select all of the points and set these to hard interpolation. And then I'll check for overlapping points. And we do have a couple. I'll move the object axis to here. And then snap the object to this point here. And we can also make a copy of the axle support. And 
move it over. And let's see, I think I'll just change the object axis or move the object axis to this point here, which means we can now snap this to this point here. And I'll put these three splines in an object, center the axis and reset the position, scale and rotation. And I'm going to switch on the null object with the body of the coal wagon. And apparently we need to rotate these splines around 90 degrees. I'll just switch that off again for a second and switch off snapping. So minus 90 and I'll reset the axis to zero. And let's switch on the body again. I just move this down and I'm going to move the object axis to this point here. And then snap the entire construction to here. And that looks like a perfect fit. So that's good. And let's switch on those wheels. I'll put these in an object and center the axis. And then I'll just move it and put it into position here. So this looks about right. just move these to the null object with not with the wall where's the other one oh it's up here I should have named things we're going to do that in a second so that is the entire wheel assembly just resetting the axis We do need to move the axis though, because we need another copy for uh, the back of the car. I'll just make a copy and I'll move this over. And we need to put the object axis here and then just snap it to do that. Snap it to this point here. And I think that's looking good. I'll just select all three of these null objects, put them in another null object, and I'll move the axis to the center and the bottom, and then move everything to the center of the Cinema 4D grid. Before I extrude these splines, I'm going to remove them from the null objects and I'll check the object axes and I will change the object axis on, on some of these splines. So let's go ahead and drag these null objects out of there. 
And for now, I'm going to group to ungroup everything. Well, let's do these one at a time. drag these out here. Now we can delete this one. And I'll just drag these down to here. And maybe let's switch on viewport solo single and I'll reset the axis for the front wall and also for the front wall detail or decal and also I'm going to center the object axis on these two I'll just undock this so I can do this more quickly. Now this one is okay. This one's okay as well. And here I'm going to reset the axis. Same for the decal of the back wall. And I'm going to reset the axis on this one and on the decal and I'm also going to center the axis on both of these. Same for the floor, I'll just reset the axis and also use axis center to center the axis. Let's just keep everything open. And this is our floorboards. We also need to reset the axis and then just center it. And this axle part is okay. And this one is okay as well. And this wheel is fine. This one's fine as well. Axle support, we need to change the axis. And let's also center the object axis or well, maybe I'll keep it here. It's right at the center of this opening here, which is actually good. And for this one, I'll just reset the axis. And I'll just move it down to here. the axle parts are both fine and the wheels actually are fine as well and this one I'm just going to reset the axis and on this one we will probably have to move the axis as well as reset it Just move it down to here. Okay. 
So now would be a good time to save the project file. And now we can start extruding all of these splines. And we have a lot of splines. And I'll try and extrude everything at once. It might be more confusing, but it has the advantage that we can automatically name all of the extrude objects and give them the names of the objects or of the splines. Maybe I'll just rename some of these as well. I'm just going to add an extrude object and the advantage of doing it like this is that we can extrude everything and convert the extrude object and then all the extrude objects that will be created will have the names of the splines. The disadvantage may be that the object axis of the extrude objects may not be where the object axis of the splines is, but we'll see that in a second. So I'll drag all of these splines into that null object and right now only the first one gets extruded and I'll change that to hierarchical so everything gets extruded and I'll change the movement to 2.16. We'll still have to make changes though because we can't extrude everything along the z-axis but for now that's going to be fine and I'll just make this editable and that means we're getting all of the extrude objects which will have the names of the splines so that's a good thing uh, we can delete this and it looks like the extrude objects do have the position of the splines which is great so now all we need to do is change the direction of the extrusion of some of these objects and what we're going to do is we'll start with the floor And I'll use viewport solo hierarchy here. And we need to extrude that floor down. So that's looking good. Let's check the wheels next. And these need to, no, actually, these seem to be right. These ones need to go to the outside. And this one is facing the right direction. This one we need to change to minus 2.16. And actually it looks like we do need to change the extrusion of those wheels to minus 2.16 over here as well. And that's not really working. I think these might be in the wrong place. These ones over here seem okay. But you can see the axles are sticking through here. So what we need to do is we need to move these over a little bit, both of these wheels. And let's see, maybe we can move these over on the Z axis plus 2.16 and that fixes that. Let's take care of the axle support next. We need to extrude this one. I'm just checking. It does seem to be symmetrical, but we do need to 
extrude them this way. So the question is, how can we do that? Let's try and put this to minus. So it's working over here. Let's select this one. Also change it to negative 2.16. problem is that this one isn't working and I think we may have to oh, we can't really move these can we let's switch off everything except for the floor and this Excel support. It is actually extruded in the right direction. I'll just switch everything else back on. So what's going on over here? The wheels are in the correct position the axles are in the correct position. If I switch that, I'm not seeing where the problem is. I think I know what the problem is. Let's select the support down here. I'll just set this to zero, which makes things less confusing. And I'll do the same thing with the one at the back. And these wheels over here definitely need to go back. I'll just switch everything off here, go to my top view and I'll use axis extension to line the wheel up with this point here and we need to move this wheel over as well so let's switch everything else back on again and the reason these axles are sticking out is because they're extruded in the wrong direction. This needs to be minus 2.16 on the x-axis and the other one needs to be minus 2.16 on the y-axis. And now we are getting a perfect fit here. So let's fix those over there and this one needs to go down minus 2.16 I'll just copy that number. So this one needs to be extruded over this way. Same for this one. And it looks we're fine everywhere down here. So let's move on to the top. I'll start with the front wall and we need to extrude this forward on the x-axis and the, the decal I'm going to move to the front 
and it looks like it is not centered oh no it's just extruded the wrong way I'll just select this and set this to zero because we also need to extrude it along the x-axis and I think I'm just going to turn this into a texture decal eventually let's just move this over minus point two maybe so it looks something like this now and let's see the wall on the left we need to extrude this over minus 2.16 and I'm going to move that decal over minus 2.16 on the z-axis and I'll extrude it minus point two like I did the decal at the front and this may be a bit much actually let's do 2.1 and I'll change the front decal to point one as well so something like that looks a lot better and let's see the right wall is okay where is the decal it's this one I think wall right decal and let's also rename the spline and I'll just extrude this point two And we need to move this point 2.16 over here. And let's do point 1 like we did for the other one. Okay. Now let's move on to the wall at the back. And we need to move the decal 2.16 that way and extrude it point 0.1 and I haven't extruded the floorboards yet so I'm going to do that next and these need to go up 0.1 on the y-axis so we're getting something like this and that looks fine and that's actually looking pretty good we do have an issue up here and the problem is that we're using splines so we can't really follow that slanted surface here on the real world model that of course wasn't a problem but we do have that problem here and we need to change that and we can actually change that pretty easily I'll just select the walls on the left and on the right And let's select the splines go to point mode and I'll just make a cut from this point up and then we can select this or these points here and snap them to the real wall so that's fixing that issue And the one thing we still need to do is add fillet caps. 
and I'm not going to add fillet caps to the decals. So let's select all of the extrude objects, but let's select the decals. It's these four and also the floorboards. We don't want to put fillet caps on those either. And for the rest, I'm going to use fillet caps and I'll switch that to 0.1 and I'll add a bit of detail. And we need to constrain the fillet caps. So let's switch that on and that should also bring our decals back, but it really didn't. So I'm wondering why that is. Let me just go back a few steps. I selected the wrong objects. I also need to deselect the front wall. Oh, I actually did deselect it. So I'm wondering what the problem is. So we've got these one, two, three, four, five decals deselected. And that's actually fine. So let's try the fillet caps again and figure out what the problem might be. I'll constrain these, but it still makes the decals disappear. I wonder why that is, because it really shouldn't be that way. If I constrain the bevels, the objects actually shouldn't get bigger but it seems that they did. So let's just try and select, well, we have to select each of these individually and I'll just try and increase the movement and see if that helps and it does. So we'll do just that, we'll increase the amount of the movement and that will get our decals back here. We're still getting some weirdness, which we shouldn't. And we do seem to have an issue with the decal at the front here. So the question is, what is the problem? The problem may be that the offset is still too much. I'll just try and reduce that. To 0 0.05 and let's do the same thing for the bevel on the other side and that's looking better That's looking good so far. And there is one more object that we need to add and that's the hook that goes into this opening and provides a connection between all the wagons. So let's go back to the 
file where we save the splines and we need one of these pieces here. I'll just copy that and paste it over to my coal wagon file and I'll switch it to viewport solo single and we need to clean that up a little bit I'll just check the dimensions on this and we seem to be fine this is 3.6 okay I just delete this point and I'm also going to delete these two but it might be a good idea to make a copy first as a reference I'll switch that off for now and just get rid of these points and I'll also get rid of this one and we can select all of these and set them to hard interpolation and we don't need these points and I'll just quickly check for overlapping points and weld them if I find any okay so I'm going to move this point over oh I used the wrong axis using axis ex extension and I'll snap this to here and I'll snap this point to this one that means we can now get rid of these two Let's switch the reference back on and I'm going to move these two down and snap them to the bottom here and then we can select all four of these and chamfer them like so let's do something like this let's get rid of this object and I've just centered the object axis on this one and put it to the center of the cinema 4d grid but we need to move this to where it needs to be so I'll just move the object axis to here switch off viewport solo and I'll switch off all of the extrude objects and we need to move this object to here and let's put this in an extrude and extrude it to 0.16 and this is the hook and I'll just put this down there switch everything else back on and let's go ahead and add fillet caps to this one as well do 0.05 again with three subdivisions and there we go that is the hook in this thing so now we've got the entire coal wagon I just organized the scene a little bit and then we can also render textures for the decal and you can use the actual geometry or the textures whichever you prefer but first of all I'm going to group a few of these objects again like the axles and the axle supports and the wheels I just cut them just to see if I selected all the objects that I need 
and it seems I did. I will just group these and call this wheel assembly. And this is the other wheel assembly. We also need the Oh, did I forget one of these? Okay, I'm going to group these ones, and this is also a wheel assembly. And I'll put the walls in another null object that I'm going to call walls and we actually might add the floor to that it is kind of a wall and then we have the decals I'm also going to group them call them decals and walls and the hook maybe well I'll put it in the walls, not object. Okay, so next we're going to render out the textures and apply them to our coal wagon. Before we render the decals, there's one more thing I want to change because I mentioned earlier that we have an issue with this decal on the front here. I'll just select it and go to viewport, solo single, and I'll switch off the extrude object, select the spline, go to point mode. And the issue is that we need to join some segments here. And that should fix that problem. Let's just try and close that spline. Oh, it is closed. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so that's fine. I think I'm going to do this decal at the front as a texture as well. Now, in order to render the textures, I'm just going to copy all the decals, except for the floor. I'm going to keep the, these as actual geometry. And we should probably, once we've added the bevels, move these points back a little bit. Right now they're intersecting, but it's a small detail. I think we might as well keep it the way it is. Anyway, I'm going to copy the decals and paste them to a new file. I'll just set all of them to zero for the movement. And I'll set the splines to maximum resolution. So we're getting something that is completely smooth. And I'm going to put a color on there. Let's start with which one is it? Wall left. I'll just center this in my viewport and I'll create a material without any reflectance. And you can make that any color you want. I'm going to pick a nice dark blue. So 
So something like this looks fine. And let's go to the render settings. I'm going to change the output and I'll make this 1600 for the resolution and I'm going to save this out as a PNG file because I can add an alpha channel to that. And I'm going to set this view as the render view and then I'm just going to hit render and I made a render of what we have so far while I took a break. I'll just delete this one for now. So this is our decal walls side. And I'll create another material, make this luminant and I'll just make it plain white. This is for the alpha texture and I'll put it on there and render that. Next let's do the decal at the back wall and let's switch off the front wall decal and I'll put the same textures on there so I'll just copy them and I'm going to use this as a render view and for this we could use a square format Just change this to 1600 by 1600. And let's render this. And this is the decal wall back. And it's the alpha one. Let's do another render with a color. And next, let's do the front wall. I'll center this in the viewport. And for this one, we need to change the resolution again. 1600 by, what was it? 800, I think. Let's just do 1920 by 1080. Lock the ratio and it was 1600 by 900. Okay. I'll send this again and let's do a render. So this is the decal wall front. And this is the corresponding alpha channel. And we don't need the wall on the right because it's the same decal as the wall on the left so we might as well delete that and I'm going to save this as coal wagon decal textures And I'm going to save my rendered images as PNG files to my texture folder that I've prepared. So I've already saved a copy of this earlier. I'm just going to override it.
and we're going to close this file. I'm going to hide all the decals except for the floorboards. I think I'll just drag these out. And I'll put the floorboards in the walls null object. I'm also going to center the axis of the wheel assemblies on the null objects. And actually, while we're at it, we might as well group the wheels and the axles and put these in their own group because these are the parts that we may want to rotate and animate. So um, what we need is the wheel and an axle part and, oh, actually we need two wheels. So let's group these. And let's call these wheels. And I'll move the object axis to the null object if I can. Okay, and for the second wheel assembly, we need to group the same objects. And I think I forgot to put the other axle part in there. And I'm going to center the axis on this one as well. And now we can rotate these parts. And next I'm going to create some textures for my walls. And I'll just double click here in the Material Manager and drag out how many do we need front wall left wall back wall right wall four so this is the wall front i'll switch off the reflectance and turn on the alpha channel and i'm going to load my images in there and i'm going to make it a copy at the project location So we need the wall front alpha in there and let's select the next one and this will be the wall left. We might as well do walls left and right as one texture, left and right. So walls side. And again, I'll uncheck the reflectance channel and use the alpha channel. And the next one is the wall back. And this material is going to be just a base texture as a placeholder for whatever textures you're going to use eventually for the walls. And I'll make this a bright white. And I'm going to put this on all of my objects here. So 
So we'll just apply this basic white texture, although we can remove it again from the null objects. So I'll start with the wall. Let's do the wall left first. I'm going to drag my decal texture on there. Let's rotate this around. And I think it's R1 or is it C1? I'm not sure. In this case it's C2. And I'm going to change the protection of this to flat. And with the object selected, I'll go to texture mode. And I'll just go to my side view. Hit NB to switch to this mode here, grow shading. So we can see the textures and we can select that tag and select both length U, U and length V and then Hold down the Alt key, and I'll just change that. I'll also switch off tiling. And instead of just holding down the Alt key, I'm also going to hold down a Control. So we can scale both of these. And I'll just need to move this over and down. change that to 40 by 40 because things keep going wrong here. Just scale it down in the viewport. It's a little bit faster. And we need to rotate this around 180 degrees. So we're getting there. And I'm holding down the Alt key so I can tweak this in smaller increments. Let's do something like this. And I'm going to increase the length here and move this up a little bit. And I'm also going to increase the length here and move it over a bit. And because it's such a small model, it's a little bit tricky to do that. So something like this should be fine. And we can copy this tag to the right wall and it should be where it needs to be. So that's good. Next I'm going to add the back wall texture. I'll put it on there and let's just switch that to flat and rotate it around 90 degrees and let's go to the right view
for some reason I can't seem to scale these proportionally. It's probably because I'm doing something wrong. So let's move this over and down. Hitting NV on my keyboard. I also switch off tiling on this one and change the selection to C2. So there we go. So it still needs to be a lot smaller. Just switch on ambient occlusion for now, so we get a faster render. And it's looking good. I think we could even scale up the texture on the side wall a little bit. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Make this a little bit bigger. And move it up back down again a little bit maybe it's a little bit too big something like this and then I'm just going to copy this over to the right wall and delete this tag okay so that leaves the front wall and I think the base texture is a little bit too bright I'm going to change that make it less bright and change the model from Lamversion to Arenaer. Okay, so that is looking a little bit better. So that leaves the front wall and I think I saw something earlier. Decal front and decal back. I loaded the wrong image here. Decal back alpha so I'll put that on did I do this right now no I did it wrong again I need to load the front alpha of course so let's put this on the front wall switch off tiling change the projection to flat rotate it 90 degrees and let's put the selection to C2 so we can see it on the front of this wall and then I'm just going to change that to 30 by 30 and I'll move it over and down
be a touch bigger. And I think we're pretty much done. Let's switch back to model mode. I just add a floor object and I did switch ambient occlusion back on. And let's see, I think I'll try and increase the bevel a little bit on my extrude objects. On everything. Maybe we need to do this separately. I'll try point 0.8 or point 0.08. Let's just see how that looks. I do want these to be a little more obvious. I think I just switched it off completely on the walls. Where are my walls? They're over here. Oh, I added one zero. That was not what I wanted. So this is the end of part one of my wooden toy train project. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you again soon.